Hello, how are you doing? And welcome back to the channel. Is the whole of the English rugby system potentially in trouble? That's what I'm talking about in this video. It might seem a little reactionary after that defeat to France at Twickenham at the weekend. But what I think that defeat has exposed, the heaviest defeat for the England men's side at Twickenham in their history, it has exposed some of the issues for the game currently in England at the moment. So that's what I'm going to be talking about in this video, the various different issues that there are, why they are a big deal, but also that they can be fixed, although it does take a lot of people all getting on the same page and wanting to make a change. So it's an important topic. Do subscribe to the channel and like the video if you haven't already and drop a comment down below. What do you make of the issues I talk about in this video? It's going to include the issues with the Premiership and the issues with the pathway for younger players coming through into the England setup. All right, let's get into it. So the issues that I'm going to talk about are to do with a whole lot more than just the men's national side. It's more than just Steve Borthwick and his coaches. But as I said in the intro, it is, I think, had a massive spotlight put on it by the fact that they have just been absolutely pumped at home against France, who tore them apart. A French side who traditionally had all sorts of issues within their game domestically. They were in a, a pretty bad place for a best part of a decade but that is a sign that England can come out of this but we need to acknowledge these issues and I'm going to start with the Premiership and we look at it this season the financial stability of that league two clubs going out of business in Wasps and Worcester clubs having to be propped up essentially by owners who are willing to put their cash in the game not generating enough money it's so reliant upon Twickenham and those international matches to fund the whole of the game in England and Covid obviously had a massive impact on that and I'm by no means a financial whiz but from what you read and what you understand they are still continuing to recover the RFU even though full crowds are back at Twickenham from the impact financially that Covid had on them. So because of this, what's happening at the moment is the Premiership isn't able to hold on to its best players. We're seeing a number of players from Exeter, whether it's Sam Simmons, Luke Cowan Dickey. Um, we're seeing loads of other guys head overseas to earn their paychecks because where they can get paid their market value, which is completely fair to them. But it does mean that the Premiership as a result is weaker because they're losing their best players, both the English players and also some of the marquee players as well. The likes of Semi Randrandra and Charles Piertel at Bristol, for example, won't be there much longer because they can earn more money playing overseas. And I think the result of this, and I think actually what we're seeing this year in the Premiership, and I'll get on to how good a league it is, is there are a lot of average teams in the Premiership. Saracens are the best team quite comfortably. Sale are good as well and underneath them in second. After that, I think whoever occupies third and fourth, with the greatest respect to them, will be relatively average if you look at their records. And if you look at the records of the teams that occupy those spots at the moment, they've only won a couple more games than they've actually lost. They're very, very hit and miss. So it makes it great for the spectators. And when you hear Simon Massey-Taylor, the CEO of Premiership Rugby, or various other people wax lyrical about how great a league it is, I think what they're confusing is how competitive it is. From a competitive point of view, it is great because you do often see the sides down the bottom beat the sides up the top. But I don't think it's necessarily a great league in terms of quality at this moment in time. If we want to compare it to the teams at the top of the French League, to Leinster and the top South African teams in the URC, the English clubs are, generally speaking, falling pretty short in European competition. I think that is a reflection of that. So it's entertaining, but don't confuse that with quality overall. And something actually that Eddie Jones mentioned towards the end of his tenure as the England coach, speaking about selection. And for all the, the nonsense that would often come out from Eddie Jones, one of the most interesting things I heard him say in an interview about selection was that there are a lot of good players in the Premiership. It's working out who the great ones are. It's the challenge in terms of selection as the England head coach. And I think, personally, I think that rings pretty true at the moment and at this moment in time with what we see. How many great players do England currently have? I think there's loads of good ones. There's loads of other players in the Premiership, whether it's Tom Pearson at London Irish that you could say maybe he deserves an op a chance in the back row of England. I think there's a lot of players of that calibre, but how many truly great players are there playing in the Premiership? I don't know, just something to think about. Let me move on to my second point of this and why English rugby and the system is possibly in trouble. And that's the pathway. And I remember when I was at school, which was back in kind of the late 
2000s. I left school in 2011. The England under-20s were consistently one of the best under-20 sides in the world. They regularly got to semi-finals and finals of the under-20 World Cup. They won it on a couple of occasions as well. And a number of those players from those sides have come through and played for the national team. Whereas now, if you want to look at the record, I went back to 2018. So in 2018, to be fair, they came second on points difference. In 2019, they were third behind France and Ireland. 2020, they were fourth behind Ireland, France and Scotland. In 2021, they won it. 2022, they were third behind Ireland and France. And this year, they're currently third and they lost 42-7 against France on Friday night. So they did win a Grand Slam in there the year they won it. But I think from the rest of those results, that more looks like the anomaly rather than the rule, like back in the days when the England under-20s were consistently winning a lot more than I think they are at the moment. And again, I think that go comes down to the RFU. Without going into huge details, I think there's been a lot of changes in the pathways and what they've tried to bring through. And I think England are struggling at this moment in time. I don't think they have as dominant an under-20 side. I don't think they're coaching or bringing through the players as well as they used to do. And I think that is an issue for the national team and for the men's game in England at the moment. And I think it's leading to possibly a lack of strength in depth. And if you want to look at the current England side, I think it's probably kind of exposed at the moment. Because outside of Genge and Sinclair, we've got Dan Cole and Mako Vunapola coming off the bench. I don't think there's the strength in depth in the props. I think outside of Jamie George, there's a real lack of strength in depth at Hooker with Jack Walker and Tom Dunn. I know Luke Cowan Dickey's injured, but he's also heading off to France. So what happens then? At number eight as well in Alex Dombrant, as brilliant as he is for Harlequins, I think he's struggled with England so far. Billy Vunapola has moments, doesn't he? He's been brilliant before for England. Can he do it on a regular basis for them again? I don't know. So I think there are positions all over the team that actually England don't have a strength in depth at the moment, which for the size of the country, for the player pool that we always talk about that they have to select from, um, that I think is a massive, massive concern at this moment in time. So those are the two reasons, the premiership and the issues there and also the pathway. Now, I'm sure this is a this is a really complicated issue. People might watch this and have other ideas and other things that I've missed out. Maybe this is a bit of an oversimplification, but those are the two things for me that I think are major issues in the English game at the moment. And as I've said already, the good thing about this is... I think England can overcome it because France have been able to. France had a very similar system where there was a real friction between the clubs and the union and they eventually got everyone on the same page, acknowledged the benefit of having a really strong national team, in part driven by the fact they had a home World Cup on the horizon, which is this year. And they all worked to be able to get the French national team as strong as possible. That's what we need in England. It needs compromise from the premiership, from the clubs, and from the RFU as well. It requires everyone to get around the table and work out what is in their best interest so the game can be more sustainable and also so the national side can be as successful as possible. Because international rugby, being the, the huge beast it is, it's so important that that national side is successful, I think. And for a long time now, I know even though England did win a couple of Grand Slams, uh, sorry, a couple of Six Nations, it hasn't been great. It really hasn't been great. So things do need to change. But I believe that it can change, whether it does or not, we will wait and see. Let me know what you think in the comments down below about what I've gone through in this video and the potential issues facing the game in England. Subscribe to the channel and like the video as well. And I'll see you in the next one.